Hello, my dear family. Today in our menu is a story not quite ordinary. It differs from the stories I've published before. We will talk about how important it is to value your marriage, to be able to forgive mistakes, and not to be hypocritical. So, let's get started soon. I wanted to break this story into several parts, but I changed my mind. Well, let's begin. Where do I begin? I guess when I was just a young buck of 19 freshly out of high school on his way to college. Like a lot of kids at that time I guess I thought I was hot stuff. I dated a lot and tried to see how many pairs of panties I could get into. God, I love the challenge. Will she or won't she? That is the question. I had as many wills as I did will nots. I started college but like most young guys at that time I dropped out eventually. My mind was on adding notches to my bedpist, not studying. I did learn enough in college to land some good jobs. I was in sales which put me in a lot of homes. Damn, I like that. Most places I stopped were just for business, and I took care of it, being one of the top salesmen. Then there were the different girls. That's when you could smell it upon entering a residence. The woman, usually alone, dressed in sexy clothes or robes and nightgowns. In these cases I usually got the sale quickly, and then did what comes natural with a young buck and a lonely or horny woman of any age. The hardest thing to judge was determining if the woman was flirting or wanted something else. I didn't want to lose my job for a random lay when there was so much out there. I usually let the ladies take the lead. If they brought it up or made the first move, I jumped their bones. I probably passed up a lot of women just to be on the safe side. I eventually met a really nice gal when I was doing a little shopping at the mall. She was just a sweet little thing standing a little over 5 feet tall, a big bubbly smile and curves in all the right places. As she waited on me I used my charm and tried to get a date. After about the 10th time coming in the store she agreed to go out with me. I was really falling for this girl. I was just hoping she was doing the same. I still kept my sales job while dating Nancy. We got along great together and eventually made love. Yes, it was love. It was so much different than the sleeping around I was used to. I wanted to please this woman, not just myself. After about 10 months of dating, she became pregnant. She was on birth control, but I guess we were that one in 99 chance. In her fourth month of pregnancy we got married. Looking back I guess I wasn't ready to be married. I loved Nancy, I really did, but I was 20 and pretty immature. I thought with my dick. I slept with a few gals after getting married just because I could. It was different from making love with Nancy. More than anything I still believe it was the chase. Just to say I was able to get into a girl's pants and then do it. I didn't brag about it to anyone, but I believe people knew. I was a married guy with a kid on the way. I know people want to call me a bastard, prick, lowlife, and all the other adjectives. I deserve to be called them all. I know that now but then it was just trying to get into any woman's panties. I was an immature kid. One day Nancy found out I banged one of the girls at the office. She cried and cried and we talked about it. She thought about divorcing me and probably should have. She eventually forgave me. I really began feeling bad about the affair. For some reason at 20 years old I didn't think about my actions until it was too late. Then after I found out what it did to my loving wife, it tore me apart. I vowed never to cheat on her again if she would forgive me. I kept that promise and tried to be a good husband. The baby was born, a son we named Jacob. We were now a family. We had our problems like any family. We could always use more money. We didn't agree on what to buy. Like any young couple we had a big difference of opinions. But we were able to work them out. One thing was for sure, and that was that after my affairs my love grew for Nancy. I might not have always showed it, but it was there. I would die for that woman. Making love to her was fantastic. I believe it was because of the effort both of us put into it. I would do anything to make her climax. To this day, hers is the only pussy I ever ate. I love sticking my tongue deep into her pussy until she climaxed. We even tried anal about three times. It wasn't all it was hyped up to be. Her ass was so tight it hurt my dick. I used some Kentucky jelly so I could at least get the head in. It did feel good shooting a load in her ass though. She preferred good old fashioned pussy sex. Didn't make any difference who was on top or if I got her from behind, it was all good. She didn't like to give head. She tried it a few times, but I could tell she hated it. I wasn't going to make her do it when she didn't receive pleasure from it. I continued to eat her out. I know it made her feel great. A couple of years later we had another son David. We couldn't have been happier. We were truly a family. Probably as normal as they come. I always wanted to own my own business. 
to be able to control my own destiny. Nancy and I talked and talked about it. Money was kind of tight with having the two boys and all the other expenses. We finally found a small hardware store. We bought it on land contract and made the business a success. Not a lot of money but enough to survive. I was really happy to have fulfilled that dream of having my own business. A wonderful wife and two sons. Life was good. Nancy didn't lose all her weight after the second baby. She always talked down about herself. I told her she looked fine. I loved her heavy, skinny, it didn't make any difference to me. Of course she never really believed me, but it was true. When I looked at her I didn't think about her weight. Granted that a beautiful sculpted body looks great, but I love Nancy regardless of the weight factor. Besides, she was a little overweight, not obese. Hell, I was 30 pounds overweight myself. She would go on diet after diet. Always trying something to take the weight off. We would argue about it over and over again. She always ended the arguments by throwing the affair up at me, even though it was years and years earlier. I guess even though she said she forgave me deep down the negative feelings were still there. She worked part-time in her job while the boys were growing up. After the boys were in high school, she took a promotion in her job. She was a department manager and would make a lot more money. She decided to get back on the diet kick and also joined a health club for women. I didn't mind this since it was an all-woman exercise place. Whenever a woman joins a health club and the husband doesn't, it seems to lead to affairs. I was surprised she stayed with it. She began to lose weight and was feeling good about herself. That made me feel good. I liked her to be happy, and if being thinner made her happy then I was happy. Our sex life started to rear up again. Like most married couples it waned for a few years while being busy with the family. Whenever we made love it was good. I guess after so many years of marriage you just sort of take the sex for granted. Sometimes we might go as much as two months without having sex. But then when we made love it was great. She liked her job and newfound body. She just seemed so much happier. Then it happened. She came home and asked if I would mind if she went out with her friends. I said of course not, you've been going out with them for years. She mentioned they were having a girls night out on Saturday and wanted to make sure I didn't have a problem with it. This just seemed strange. I knew something was bothering her. So I asked her what the problem was. She just said she was probably going through a menopause phase and her mood swings were probably getting to her. I hugged her and said I loved her and I would always be here for her. She just hugged me back. I felt her shudder a little. I knew we had a problem, but it wasn't the right time to face it. I would just have to think about it and decide how to approach her. On Saturday I watched to see how she dressed to go out with the girls. She just wore a pair of black slacks and a nice blouse. She looked good, but to me she always looked good and I often told her so. She told me where they were expecting to go in case I needed her for anything. Then her friend Pam picked her up and they left. It was bothering me. I had to know what was happening to her. I waited a few minutes and headed out myself. I really didn't want to spy on her because I always trusted her. There just seemed to be something wrong with her demeanor. I had to find out what it was. Nancy and her friends went to a combination dance hall lounge nightclub. It was really big. It was easy to get lost in the crowd. I went up to the second floor on a kind of balcony where I could oversee the lower level. I was able to spot Nancy and her girlfriend sitting together in two of the half round booths. They seemed to be having a good time. Maybe I was wrong, maybe this wasn't part of the problem. I ordered a drink and just kind of watched Nancy. I felt bad being there, but I needed to know for my own well-being. Nancy's friends were a mixture of married, single and divorced women. Most I have met at one time or another. There were a few there that I didn't recognize. I figured she met them at the health club. After about a half hour a few guys came over and asked some of the girls to dance. The first couple of times Nancy shook her head no, but after she had a few drinks she agreed to dance a little. I really didn't have a big problem with her dancing, but because of the possible problems she might be having, it made me nervous. She was starting to spend more and more time on the dance floor. I didn't recognize any of the guys. They could have been from work or just strangers out for a good time. I decided to stay for a little while longer to see what was going on. She started to dance a few slow songs with one guy, and he was holding her close. I saw him slide his hands down to her ass and pull her toward him. She just reached back and gently pushed his hands away. He did it a number of times, and she continued to just push it away. The last time he grabbed her ass she left it there a while longer before pushing it away. Then I saw him reach up and touch her breast. He held it there a few seconds, and then she again pushed his hand away. 
It was bothering me. Should I say or do something? Should I confront her in some way? She wasn't supposed to know I was even here. I was wondering if this went on before or maybe she just didn't want to make a scene. I just didn't know. It wasn't like her to do nothing about it. After the song ended she went back and sat with her friends. I was too far away to hear any conversations, but some of the girls were laughing or smiling. It could have been about anything. A few minutes later the girls were finishing their drinks and were getting ready to leave. They were saying goodbye to the other girls and the guys. The guy Nancy was dancing with reached over and gave her a light goodbye kiss. Nothing special, just a light kiss, but it really bothered me. Was I reading more into this than I should have? I know I will never forget it no matter how innocent it was. I got up quickly and left out the back door, got into my car and headed home. The boys were already in their room watching TV. I just said hi to them and went and made myself a drink. I already had liquor on my breath and figured it would be a good cover. Nancy arrived within 10 minutes and I greeted her. I asked her if she had a good time, and she said she did, but she seemed a bit nervous. I looked her in the eyes and said, Nancy, do we need to talk? To the best of my knowledge Nancy has never lied to me. I'm sure she has secrets like everyone else, but I have never caught her in a bold lie. I could see tears form in the corner of her eyes. She looked at me and said, Jim, I have a problem and I don't know what to do. And she started crying. I held her clothes and hugged her, and I asked her if it had anything to do with her girl's night out. She said, yes. Dot dot no. Dot dot maybe. Dot dot I don't know. Let's sit down, I think we need to talk. I said, Nancy, tell me why you are so upset. Start with this evening, what happened? I wanted her to tell me about tonight because I saw what was happening and could gauge her truthfulness. Well, she said, we arrived at the club and were drinking. I started dancing with a few guys. One in particular. He was touching my butt and breasts, and I should have slapped him but didn't. I let him feel me up and didn't stop him. I pushed his hands away and when he put them back I really didn't get mad. Nancy, why didn't you stop him? Push him away or something. She was crying lightly and said, I liked it Jim. I wanted him to touch me. I'm so sorry, I can't get these feelings out of my system. It's making me crazy. Was this the first time it ever happened Nancy? She started crying again and said, No, this has been happening the last couple of months, and I can't shake it. I want to be touched. I want men to want me. My god, Nancy, have you been having affairs? Have you been ducking other men? Have you been cheating on me? She was crying and answering me at the same time, saying, God, no, Jim, I haven't ever cheated on you. I have never had another man. Never but as of late I have let men touch me. I was hoping it was just a short phase one was going through and you would never find out. I just can't hide it anymore. It's tearing me up inside. I can't live like this. I had to tell you. Jim, I love you so much, but I feel like I missed something. You're the only man I've been with. I know you have had other women. Stop right there Nancy. You have thrown that affair up to me for the last 15 years. You are not going to use it against me now to have an affair. Is that what you want Nancy? My permission to cheat on me, to cuckold me, to make a wimp of me. It isn't going to happen Nancy. I love you with all my heart. I always will, but you will not make a fool of me just so you can have some strange ducks. Someone to compare me to. Well, Nancy, is that what you want? A chance to have your little flings and then come back home to me after your pussy gets satisfied. Nancy replied, I don't know Jim, I just don't know as she was crying. I had tears in my eyes as I told Nancy that she was right. Neither of us could live like this. We both needed time to think. I told her I was going to separate from her for approximately two months. She could live in the house with our sons. I would live in the apartment above my hardware store. She said, Jim, I love you. I don't want you to go. I'm just all mixed up. Please don't leave me. Two months, Nancy, two months to decide if you want your freedom and newfound libido, or if you want to stay married to me. I have no idea what you are going to do, but if you decide to be used by just anyone I'll apply for a divorce immediately. These two months are for you to decide what you really want, not to see how many affairs you can get into. I will just take it a day at a time and suggest you do the same. Since tomorrow is Sunday I'll gather my personal things and take them to the apartment. I'll also talk to the boys in the morning. The next morning I told Jacob and David to come into the living room. I think they heard some of the conversation from their room the night before. 
They sat down as I explained that their mother and I were having some marital difficulties, and that I would be living above the store till we got things straightened out. I explained that this was not their doing, but was a problem between their mother and I. Nancy was standing behind them with tears in her eyes, but not saying a word. I explained to them that we both loved them very much, and that they could talk to either of us at any time. I would still attend their school events. Nothing has changed other than I wouldn't be living at the house. No matter what the future brings they will always have a roof over their heads, and won't have to worry about moving and losing their friends. They wanted to know more, but I told them that was all I could tell them for now. I said that their mother and I had some major problems to work out. We would know within two months what the future holds. My boys were sad as they helped me take my personal stuff to the apartment above the store. I told them everything would be alright and for them to help their mother as much as possible. She needed their love if we were to stay a family. I instructed them to not ask her questions about the separation and help her around the house. They were good boys and I knew they would do what they could. I was only a mile away if they needed me. Nancy needed time to work things out. I was in a world of turmoil myself. What if I lose her? My life was beginning to turn to shit. What could I do? What could I do? I guess it was all up to Nancy now. I have some major problems to overcome. I have a wife who has never really cheated on me that I know of, and I believe her. She stuck with me through my bad boy days and kept our marriage together. To the best of my knowledge she has always told me the truth. Even though the last truth she told me could end our marriage. I truly love her and don't want to lose her. I'm not a wimp and never will be. I am willing to fight for her but have no idea of what to do. This is the biggest decision she will ever make in her life. To have an affair or save her marriage. I will not let her do both. I moved into my apartment above the store. It was lonely there. I miss Nancy so much. I was trying to give Nancy space to make her decision. I spent as much time in the store as possible just to keep myself busy. Business was really picking up and I had a hard time keeping up with all the damn paperwork. I liked the sales part but despised the paperwork. I decided I would have to hire someone to take over the bookkeeping soon. I put an ad in the paper for an office person with a background in business. I will interview people in the coming weeks. My son stopped by about every other day to help me put up stock and make deliveries. I only had two full-time employees beside myself working there. I asked the boys about their mother and how she was doing. They told me she cried about every night and was really down. They said she finally made an appointment to see a doctor. About two weeks after I moved out, I was in my office doing paperwork when Pam came walking in. Pam was Nancy's best friend since childhood. If anyone knew Nancy better than me it was Pam. She has been divorced for a couple of years, but she and Nancy were closer than sisters. There is very little that they didn't share. Pam walked up to me and just blurted out, You stupid son of a witch, what in the hell is wrong with you? How could you do this to Nancy? I said, hold on there Pam. You don't know. Dot 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 then she cut me off. No, you hold on, you stupid bastard. Nancy loves you. She has always loved you. She is having problems and she came to you with them. The only person she loves and what the hell did you do? You moved out on her. How stupid can you be? Instead of helping her, you throw her to the wolves. I'm so mad at you I could kill you. But Pam, I said, she doesn't know what she wants. I can't just let her have affairs. I'm giving her time to work it out, to come to a decision. You idiot, she needs love and companionship. She's confused and vulnerable right now. Can't you see what you did? Instead of helping her, loving her and caring for her, you threw her to the pigs. God, I just can't believe you were that stupid to walk out on her. The guys at the store are taking bets on who she will go with. They can all see how vulnerable she is. The one person she loves turns his back on her and says work it out yourself. Jim, you better get your head out of your butt if you expect to save her. I was stunned to say the least. I thought I did the right thing, but now after listening to Pam I think I may have been wrong. I did tell Nancy I'd always be there for her. Then I did walk out. Darn it, Pam was right, how stupid was I. I looked at Pam and said, what should I do? I'm lost. I just don't know what to do to help her. You know I've always loved her more than life itself. You're her best friend. Didn't you see this coming? Pam replied, Nancy and I have been talking about it for months. Nancy could be going through some kind of change or something. All women are different in their mood swings. Since Nancy joined the weight class she has been around other women who might have influenced her in some way. Made her think differently. 
Then after her losing 50 pounds other men began to notice her more and complimented her on her looks. The last thing Pam told me before leaving was to make sure that I was at Ramon's restaurant Friday at 9 p.m. I could either take Nancy home or kiss her goodbye. I was in shock. What the hell did that mean? What are you talking about Pam? What's going on? She replied, the bosses are having a business meeting Friday at 7 p.m. All middle managers are required to be there. After the meeting there will be dinner and cocktails. It was for management employees only, no spouses. The word out is a couple of managers are going to get Nancy drunk and try and seduce her. I'm not allowed to go because I'm not in management. So there will be no one there to protect Nancy. They also kind of hinted it's a dressy affair. I think you can guess why. Doesn't Nancy know about this Pam? Yes, but she is part of management and is required to go. She said she would watch her drinking and try to stay out of trouble. Pam, thank you for being such a good friend to Nancy. I'll guarantee you one thing. Someone will be there to protect Nancy Friday at 9 p.m. It will be her stupid idiotic husband who doesn't deserve her. No spouses, my butt. This husband will be there. Nancy speaks. I met Jim when we were just teenagers. I was working at the store in the mall when he came in. He kept trying to put the make on me. It was kind of funny. He would come back day after day trying to get me to go out. Then one day I just decided to say yes. He looked at me as though something was wrong, since I had turned him down so often. Do you really mean it? Are you really going out with me? As he smiled. Yes, Jim, I'll go out with you, I said, but no funny business. We started dating regularly. We started making out. He would kiss me and I started letting him fondle me outside of my clothes. I was falling head over heels for him but never wanted to show it. After a few months he started rubbing my breasts inside my clothes. I knew we were going to be getting intimate, so I made an appointment at the doctor's to get some birth control pills. I had taken them for about three days when Jim asked me out to the beach. I wore my two-piece bathing suit. It was getting late and the beach was almost empty. I can remember it as though it was yesterday. It was when I lost my virginity to Jim. We were lying on the beach on our blanket when he started kissing me. Things got heated and he proceeded to make me experience all my firsts, even my first time being kissed in places I haven't been kissed before. That is probably why I love him going down on me so much. After he finished inside, he pulled out of me and put his suit back on. I had tears in my eyes. He asked me what was the matter. I told him I was worried that after he got what he wanted he wouldn't still love me tomorrow. He said, I will always love you Nancy. I will always be there for you. From that day forward we made love almost every time we were together. I missed two of my periods in a row and went to see the doctor. I told him maybe it was the birth control pills I was taking. The doctor looked at me and said, Nancy, you're pregnant. I said, but, doctor, I'm on birth control. He told me either I started it too late, or I was that one in a hundred that got pregnant regardless of the pill. I left his office in a daze. I went to see Jim and he could see I was upset. He asked me, what is the problem? I had tears in my eyes and said, I'm pregnant. He looked at me and said, I thought you were on the pill. I told him, I was but I got pregnant anyway. I'm going to keep the baby regardless if you want anything to do with me and the baby. I love you but would never trap you. Jim then got down on one knee, looked at me and said, Nancy, will you marry me? I promise I'll always be there for you and the baby. Of course I said, yes, and that's how our life together began many years ago. In the last couple of months I have had a few life-changing events. Small in nature, but still life-changing. I got a promotion at work. More money, more prestige, I became one of the bosses, part of middle management. My sons were at an age where I wasn't needed quite as much which gave me more independence. I started working out at a health club to lose weight. I was actually succeeding. I had lost 50 pounds and felt much better about myself. Jim, my husband, said it never made any difference what I weighed to him. He was my husband and loved me, so he was looking through rose-colored glasses. What else could he say? Other men noticed me more and more. I was always being complimented which of course made me feel good. I didn't want an affair with these men, but it was nice to be complimented so often. At the health club I heard different women talk about their sex lives. How men came on to them. How they would tease the men so they would get more attention. Some women would compare the men they had sex with. The penis size and shape, what the men would do just to get in their pants. How many orgasms they had. 
It was just woman talk, but it does make you think. Looking back on the conversations I noticed that these women talked about sex, not love. Not about relationships and husbands and family. They just talked about sex. When they asked me about my sex life I just smiled. My sex life wasn't a big ball of orgasms, multiple partners or any type of group relationships. It was a loving sexual communication between husband and wife. Not always gentle but a meeting of two minds and two bodies molded into one. A lasting relationship that went far beyond the duck and suck that these women talked about. As we said in our marriage vows, to have and to hold, during good times and bad, to cherish and love, to be honest and true to each other till death do us part. I did my best to live by those vows. Pam and I talked a lot. She knew I truly loved Jim even with his old bad habits. She is a true friend. She helped me understand, even when Jim turned his back on me. He just didn't understand what I was going through. Pam and I talked about my life over and over again. She was the one who suggested I see a doctor. She even suggested a shrink, but I told her Jim wouldn't pay out that kind of money just to tell a stranger your problems. When we had our girls night out Pam told me in private to watch what I was doing. I was giving in a little too much and might regret it later. I told her, the girls at the health club say that they give in a little to get more attention. Pam just looked at me and said, think about it Nancy. Is attention from strange men really what you want? I knew she was right, but it felt good to be admired. I let some men touch me just outside my clothes so I could get more attention. I promised myself I wouldn't go any further. After about two months of this type of living, it began to get to me. Men would whisper in my ears how much they wanted me. The things they would do to me. I told them, no, I would never cheat on my husband. I made the mistake of telling one guy at work that just because my husband cheated on me, doesn't mean I would cheat on him. I often wondered what it would be like with someone else. Jim was my only lover and as far as I know he was great. I had nothing to compare him to, but he made me feel so good. I was never obsessed with sex like you read in the stories. But I did have times I wanted it. Jim could be gentle or he could be rough, but it seemed he always put me first. Hey, guys, a big flash for all of you. Women have fantasies too. Yes, we do. Everyone has fantasies, but the problem is when a person wants to live them out. If anyone tells you they don't have fantasies, then they are probably lying. I started getting hot flashes or something, I was having mood swings, and didn't think Jim paid enough attention to me. I was thinking all kinds of crazy things, some of them even sexual. It didn't make me feel good. It scared the hell out of me. I needed help. I didn't know what was happening to me. I felt I was going crazy. I couldn't overcome these fantasies in my mind. That's when I finally decided to tell Jim. I needed his hugs and kisses, his warmth and understanding that he always gave me. That safety net he seemed to have, a blanket of comfort and protection. Instead he gave me an ultimatum. If I had an affair, he was going to divorce me. Then he told me he was moving out and I had two months to make a decision. I was devastated, I had no idea where to turn. If it wasn't for Pam standing with me those first couple of weeks after Jim left, I have no idea where I would be today. Pam is divorced. She caught her husband in bed with another man one day when she came home early from work. She couldn't believe it. She ran to the end table and grabbed a gun and pointed it at both of them. She told me it took every ounce of energy she had not to pull the trigger. They were married for seven years, and she said she didn't have a clue that he was bisexual. They were divorced soon after. She dates again but is very suspicious of who she goes out with. She is now dating a guy named Ray his wife left him for another man about three years ago. They seem to be a good couple, and I sure hope they succeed. Pam deserves a better life. She is one fantastic friend and a lady you can trust. I made an appointment to see a doctor on Wednesday. I had a meeting Friday and wanted to try and have my senses. When I went in to see the doctor, a woman, she wanted to just talk to me for a few minutes first. I told her about my mood swings, the constant crying, my out of control hormones. Then the talk got more serious. I told her about the sexual side, my husband's ultimatum, and even about a possible affair. She smiled at me and told me I should have come to see her months ago. If I would have, I probably wouldn't have all these problems facing me. She took me off my birth control pills and put me on some type of hormone relaxer. It should help control the mood swings. Because of the weight loss I no longer needed to take some of the pills I was taking. She said everything was clashing in my body. I was starting the change of life, but it would be a number of years before it would be over. 
Then she looked at me seriously and said, What you told me about your husband is a bit sad. He should have stood with you. I see too many loving couples get divorced just because they don't understand. Men will always go after good looking women. You as a wife and mother have to understand that all they want is the sex. There is no lasting relationship for a lot of these men. It sounds like you and your husband need another talk. I think when he learns the facts that he will be right there with you. Then she mentioned that if I had any problems to call her immediately, otherwise she would see me in two months. I actually cried after talking to her. She just hugged me and said, everything will work out for you. Now if I could get past this stupid meeting Friday, maybe I could see Jim Saturday and have our little talk. I sure missed him, the lug head. Back to Jim. I was a mess after Pam left. God, how could I do this to Nancy? I tried to call her, but the boys said she was at the doctor's. Well, at least it was a start. I just wish I could talk to her. I called her at work on Thursday. Nancy said, I'm so glad to hear your voice. Can you stop by Saturday so we could talk? I asked, what about Friday? I wanted to verify this meeting. She said, I would love to, but I've got to go to a mandatory meeting and won't get out till late. I said, Nancy, I love you. I just wanted you to know. I love you too, Jim. Please come by Saturday. Please, she cried. I'll be there, guaranteed. I replied. I'm not going to duck up this time, I thought to myself. Thursday night was horrible. I was having dreams or nightmares. I dreamt I showed up at the restaurant, and Nancy was sitting on a couch between two men. She was half drunk and let four different men take a turn on her. I woke up drenched in sweat lying on sticky sheets. My god, I was glad it was a fantasy. If that really happened, I'd never be able to handle it. Somebody would die. How can any man just give his wife away like that? What would a woman really think of a husband who let her live out fantasies like that? There sure couldn't be love there. Well, I guess to each his own. It won't happen in my marriage. I have too much love and respect for Nancy to see her turn into a hoe. I would make sure I would be at the restaurant tomorrow. It was now Friday and a very busy day at the store. I had trouble keeping my mind on business. I wanted to go see Nancy and tell her everything would be alright. I'd be there to protect her. I called her office three times, and her bosses said she was in meetings or out. Damn it, I would have to wait till tonight unless she returned my calls. I asked Melton, one of my employees, if he could work the rest of the day today and also Saturday all day. I wouldn't be in. He said there would be no problem. He was a good employee. I told him I would send my sons over to help him that evening and Saturday. I went to the mall to see Nancy. The receptionist said the bosses were out and wouldn't be in until Monday. They had some district meeting to attend, and then another meeting for just their store management tonight. She said I could leave a message, and she would be sure Nancy would get it. I just told her I would call Nancy Monday. I didn't want to raise any suspicions. She was just the office girl. I know she wasn't part of this plan against Nancy. I went out to the floor and found Pam. She was a little nicer to me this time. She said she spoke to Nancy before she left for the meeting. She was so happy that I was going to see her Saturday. I asked how she looked and was feeling. Pam looked at me and said this is both good and bad. She said Nancy was feeling much better since seeing the doctor. She was getting back to being her old self. I said, so what's so bad about that? Pam looked at me and said, she looked fantastic. She had a low cut black mini dress on. She looked hot. Every guy would want her. Thank God we have a few bosses with brains. Only her bosses Edward and Ryan are going to make a play for her. The rest of the guys didn't want to mess up their own lives or Nancy's. They really like her as a person. You do have to understand this is grapevine information, maybe true, maybe rumor. Only problem is Ed and Ryan are the big bosses, so no one will probably go against them. I thank Pam for the information and told her what a true friend she really was, and thanks for getting me to take my head out of my butt and do what is right. Pam just looked at me and said, you two were made to be together. I don't want anyone to mess that up. You both are really my best friends. Then she said her boyfriend Ray was pretty special too. I went home to my apartment and cleaned up a little. I would be going to a fancy restaurant and at least had to dress up some so I could get in. I put on a pair of dockers and a sports blazer. I wasn't a tie wearing sort of guy. I was a hardware store owner. I called my sons and asked them about working that night and Saturday. They just said no problem dad, just tell Milton we'll be there to help him. It was now 8.30pm and I headed into the store. 
Milton had my son's stocking shelves. They were good workers even if they were my sons. This store might be there someday. That would be kind of a dad's dream. Having your sons taking over the family business. I turned to Milton and asked him to give me a roll of nickels. He looked at me strangely, but handed me the roll. I then left the store. I was on my way to the restaurant. As I entered the main dining area I was surprised to see Pam and Ray sitting there eating dinner. Pam smiled at me and said, we may not be in the private dining area, but we're as close as we could get. She mentioned, a lot of the bosses are starting to leave. I haven't seen Nancy, Ed, or Ryan yet. Pam asked her supervisor when she came out, have you seen Nancy? The supervisor said, Ed and Ryan wanted to speak with her privately and asked her to please wait. Then her supervisor left. That was the first time I really saw Ray close up. He was a big guy, maybe 6'2 over the 210 pound mark. He just mentioned that if I needed anything he would be there to help. I thanked him for his support and then headed for the kitchen. That was another way into the reserved room, through the kitchen. When I got to the entrance of the reserved room and the kitchen I just stood there a few minutes. I didn't want to barge in if there wasn't a problem. A black busboy came up to me and said, Sir, you're not allowed in here. I shuddered for a moment remembering the dream from the night before. I handed him $10 and said I'd only be there a few minutes. He accepted it and looked through the door to see what I was staring at. He saw Nancy and said, what a beautiful woman she is. But I feel sorry for her because I could tell that the two men in the room were throwing unwanted advances toward her the whole evening, and I knew she was not comfortable with it. I told him, I'm here to put a stop to it, but I had to pick my time. The busboy just smiled at me and said, I like men like you that don't take shit from guys like those two pricks. He went back into the kitchen to do his work. I just stood at the door biding my time. Then it started. Ed said, have another drink, Nancy, Ryan and I have been waiting for this day. Nancy said, please let me go Ed. If you let me leave now, I won't tell anyone what went on. Please let me go. Ed said, take the damn drink, Nancy, I'm your boss, and you will do what you're told. At that moment there was a knock on the front door. A mater had asked to speak to Ryan. He told him that his car alarm was going off, and that his front window was busted. He needed to turn off the car alarm. Ryan left the room and went to see about his Mercedes. Nancy took the drink and threw it in Ed's face. You ducking ho, Ed replied. You've been teasing me with that ass of yours for too long now. It's time to pay the piper. You don't have that no account girlfriend and wimp husband to protect you now, as he reached down under her dress to grab her. That's when I reached into my pocket and grabbed my roll of nickels and barged through the door. Nancy turned around quickly and yelled Jim. Ed turned around and I said to him, Nancy's no account wimp husband is about to kick your behind, as I hit him with my fist with the roll of nickels in it. I broke his nose on contact and maybe even his jaw. There were nickels flying everywhere. Ed fell to the floor and then Ryan came running back into the room. Ryan yelled at me saying, I'll sue you for everything you own. I loan that hardware store of yours. Just as I approached him and was about to flatten him out also. Nancy said, wait, Jim. I have something better. Ryan and I both looked at her as she pulled out a tape recorder and played just a snippet for us. Then she said, we'll see who wins their lawsuit. I'll be filing my sexual harassment charges on Monday. Nancy then said to Ryan and Ed who was still lying on the floor, the only reason I put up with your BS tonight is so I could have it on tape. Maybe, just maybe, it might save another woman from your harassment. I'll see you in court, and then she kicked Ryan dead center in the balls. He screamed out as he fell to the floor to join Ed. Then Nancy yelled out, you two are pathetic, nothing but a couple of pigs. You aren't man enough to carry my husband's jockstrap. Go duck yourself for each other. I took Nancy by the arm and as we were walking toward the door, there were a number of people standing at the door watching the events that were unfolding. They started clapping for Nancy and I as we were leaving the restaurant. The busboy just smiled and gave me a high five. Nancy and I walked out the front door hand in hand. Sitting in their car in front of the restaurant was Pam and Ray. They were both smiling as Pam got out to give Nancy a big hug. Ray looked at me and said, as we were leaving, we heard a big commotion and a car alarm go off. We thought we would stick around a few minutes to see what was happening. I looked at Ray and said, thank you. He just said, you're welcome. After Pam and Ray left, Nancy and I headed for my car. Then I realized I hadn't said a word to her through all of this. I just stopped in my tracks and looked at Nancy and said, you look beautiful. 
I'm the luckiest guy on God's green earth to have you. I'm so sorry for the way I acted. Please forgive me. Nancy started crying and hugging me. She asked, are you going to take me home? I said, are you kidding? I'm not letting you out of my sight for the rest of this night. We'll send the boys after your car tomorrow. I think it will be pretty safe here for the night even though Ryan's Mercedes was damaged and we both laughed. When we got home we headed straight for the bedroom and locked the door. As Nancy was taking off her dress she looked at me and said, what is it Jim? What are you thinking? I said, honey, why did you dress so damn beautiful for those bastards? She looked at me and said, I didn't dress for them. I dress for you. What? I don't understand I replied. Pam told me you would be there for me when I talked to her today. I just trusted that you would keep your promise to protect me. So I dress for you. I wanted the other men to know what you have that they never would and to look good for you when you got there. They were just lucky to be there until you arrived. God, Nancy, I love you so much. We both took off our clothes and lay on the bed. We kissed and hugged. We made love all night. The next morning was Saturday and when we got up our sons had already left for work. I got up to use the bathroom then walked into the kitchen and read a note on the fridge. It said, welcome home, dad. We missed you. They signed it Jacob and David. I was making coffee when Nancy came into the kitchen and saw the note. She picked up a pen and wrote the words, me too, Nancy on the bottom of the note. I grabbed her and kissed her. We sat down and talked a little over a cup of coffee. Then she got up to take a shower. When I thought she was about half done with her shower, I entered the bathroom. She asked me if I was going to wash her back. I told her only if I could wash the front also. She smiled as I entered the shower. We haven't showered together for years. It was like a whole new experience. After a quick one, she told me to get out of the shower so she could get cleaned up this time. I got out and went to get dressed. When she came into the bedroom after the shower she was walking very delicately. I looked at her and said I was sorry. She kissed me and said she deserved it for her past actions and thoughts. Then she smiled at me and said, don't expect it on a regular basis. She looked at me and said, what is it Jim? What's bothering you? You have done things last night and today that were out of this world. It was so fantastic, I shouldn't say this, but I was wondering when and how you learned all this. Honey, I have been going to the health club. All those women constantly talked about their lovers and what they do for them. How it makes their lovers feel. I fantasized too. I wondered what it would be like to be a hoe and just do it raw once in a while. I was always afraid to tell you. I didn't want you to think of me badly, but I needed to try. That was part of my confusion. I wanted to be a hoe, but only a hoe for you. God, Nancy, I love you so much. I'll do anything with you as long as it's just you and me. You are one fantastic woman. My lover, my hoe, and my wife, I love all three of you, I said as I smiled. The rest of our weekend went great. Our sons helped me move back into our house and went to get their mother's car. When they got back, they said a black guy asked them what they were doing by the car. They said they told him that it was their mother's and came to retrieve it. They showed the black guy the car keys, and he said it was okay. He was just watching over the car until it was picked up. He told our sons that they had a couple of swell parents. He loved the way they kicked ass and then gave them a high five. My sons then asked, what happened, dad? We always miss the good stuff. The busboy also said to say thank you to you for the role of Nichols. Nancy and I just laughed and said, we always protect the ones we love. I got up for work Monday morning. I dreaded leaving Nancy that day. It was like two lovers starting over. I had a lot of work to catch up on, and Nancy went to see our lawyer. Once she played the tape of how Bob and Ed acted toward her all evening, the lawyer said it was a slam dunk harassment case. She took a leave of absence till the harassment case was settled. Milton and I were interviewing applicants for the bookkeeping position. No one seemed quite right. Then Milton came into the office and said he just interviewed the perfect person for the job and told her she could start the next day. I said, what? You just hired someone without even asking me. My God, Milton, I can't believe you would do such a thing. I'm sorry but I have to talk to her first. Please send her in. I looked up at the door and in walked Nancy. She looked at me and said, I have all the qualifications and I can give you a lot of side benefits that no one else can. Do I get the job? I just looked up at her, kissed her and said, life is great. Nancy went back to the doctors about a month later like she was asked. The doctor talked with her and said how happy she felt for her. 
She has her hormones under control, and leaving the previous job took away a lot of the stress. The doctor was so glad that Nancy and I were able to work things out. But now Nancy has another problem. Since she was off the birth control pill she was now pregnant. Nancy went into some kind of shock, she was happy but crying. She didn't know how I would react. When Nancy came back to the store, she looked at me and said, Jim, do you love me? Of course I love you. How could you ask such a stupid question? Do you have another problem? I'll stand beside you, I'll be your rock. Please tell me Nancy. I'm here for you. With tears in her eyes she said, Jim, I'm pregnant and I want our baby. When? How? What happened? I asked. All stupid questions. Nancy looked at me with a half smile. When? On our renewed love for each other. How? We made passionate love to each other. What happened? I got pregnant with our love child. Yes, I screamed out, yes, I want our baby. We both started crying. I'm going to be a daddy again I cried. Epilogue. It's been 9 months since all the problems took place. We are now the proud parents of a beautiful baby girl who looks just like her mother. Nancy brings Pamela, our baby, to the store with her. We named her after Pam since she helped save our marriage. Nancy has been a whiz with bookkeeping. I might have to start paying her. She does the book so she can just pay herself if she likes. Our lawyers got back to us, and the store where Nancy worked decided to settle out of court after hearing Nancy's tape. We got a six-digit settlement. Enough to put all three of our kids through college if they decide to go. Ryan and Edward were both fired. The store found out that wasn't the first time it had happened with them. After Nancy came forward, so did a number of other girls. They all called Nancy and thanked her. They were glad to get rid of the burdens they were carrying. It looks like Pamela and Ray are going to get hitched this coming summer. We all hang around together. We're really happy for them. Daryl, the black busboy, is now our favorite waiter at the restaurant. A couple of other little things. Nancy's doctor made sure that Nancy had a normal weight gain during the pregnancy. As far as sex and love, we have a lot of both. We made love within days of the delivery. Damn, I never realized how sexy and glowing a pregnant woman could be. As Nancy says, to have and to hold, during sickness, for health, during rich times and poor. Love your spouse and don't lie to them. This is what our marriage is based on. Life is great. A beautiful ending, positive, but there's something here that needs attention. As soon as his wife boosted her self-esteem, she suddenly wanted attention from other men. Does this mean some wives are faithful only because of their low self-esteem? It's hard to say, as there are those who cheat precisely because of low self-esteem. So, where is the key? Where is this damn answer? What drives women to infidelity? Write in the comments.